Hello there, sword friends. Today I'm going to tell you about this sword right here. And again, like the last video, uh, this is a sword that I might have mentioned in a video called 17 Recent Sword Acquisitions, but I didn't make a part one for it. And this is a Bob Ignath Wakazashi that I acquired some time ago in Smith's Polish, and it was, I, I think, intended for a different style of mounting. Um, but I bought it, and and I am going to mount it up like a traditional Japanese sword. And it would have been prudent to me to talk about it in its previous condition because a little bit of it has changed and I, I'm happy with my decisions but some folks out there may not be. Anyway, uh, the story goes that this sword was acquired by somebody likely at a gun show or something like that where Bob used to sell uh, many of his, his various wares and then was acquired by somebody else and perhaps somebody else even in that chain and then eventually uh, was sold to me. And so when I got it, it was not polished up, it was in kind of a smith polish, that means uh, undone, the, the finished characteristics of the sword weren't revealed, the hamon, the, you know, the the character that Bob put into it by heat treating it. Now, it's a mono steel blade, it's not folded, it doesn't have any hada or any kind of anything like that in the steel, uh, but it is differentially heat treated, so there's a hamon there, and when I initially got the sword, I couldn't tell what kind of hamon was there or not, because it wasn't, wasn't easily uh, easy for me to see, anyway. But the blade did have some characteristics that were odd. So the Nakago looked like it was made in such a way that it was to be mounted up like a Japanese-style blade, and that it had uh, kind of the dimension and taper that you would see very often on Japanese-style swords. Uh, the tip, however, looked like it had been sanded down in one spot. I'm not sure exactly why, but it had been flattened out and had this kind of weird transition that I, I hadn't seen on really any knife before, but perhaps it's common on a style of knife I'm unfamiliar with. And three holes were drilled in the Nakago, the tang of the blade, uh, which would indicate to me that it was prepped to put scales on, though the, the taper of the blade would likely make putting those scales on a little bit a little bit harder. Um, so I'm, I'm not sure what the initial intention was, but it does look like it was made to be mounted up like a buoy knife or something like that, perhaps. And Bob was a prolific knife maker, as I understand it, but he was also a prolific sword maker and uh, was an early adopter of the Japanese style sort well, I don't know about early adopter, <laughs> but he was um, instrumental in uh, proliferating the Japanese style sword arts in the United States, and I think had had a part in tutoring a lot of the smiths that I've come to appreciate today, uh, had in some way learned a, a trick or two from Bob Ignath. And so uh, when I see his work, it's, it's really special, and I haven't had a chance to see much of his work, but recently I've acquired a number of pieces that are unfinished and were made by Bob Ignath, and I'll be uh, gradually finishing off a number of a few katana from him and a few um, and the this Wakazashi piece anyway. So uh, I went from you know over the last decade of doing these sword projects, never running across a Bob Ignath piece to now having having a few of them, which is really quite strange. But I'm <laughs> I'm happy that's the case because they're unique and interesting and pretty pieces and uh, and kind of kick me in the feels when I, when I do it. I never got a chance to talk to Bob Ignath. I've mentioned that on a few other videos, uh, but I, I, he was a well-respected person and uh, and the fact that his his you know the lessons that he taught ha are are things that I've benefited from through other craftsmen is it's kind of a special thing. So anyway. Uh, this sword was initially perhaps intended, I don't know if Bob did the cut down pieces or if a later buyer owner did, so I'm, I'm not exactly sure, but to, to me, uh, I wanted to mount it up like a Japanese style wakazashi. Um, and and so I elected to send it off to Josiah and I had him do some stuff to it. Now, um, some people recommended that I preserve the shape that, that was there and and you know, if I if I didn't if I wanted to mount it up like a Japanese style sword, that I could you know cut it down and and move the stuff around and change the shape if I wanted, uh, or I could leave it as as perhaps Bob intended it or a previous owner intended it. I'm not sure who who did the kind of weird tip and drilled out the holes and mounted up like a buoy or something that you know kind of finish it in that direction. Uh, I did kind of a mixture in the sense that I asked Josiah to correct in my mind correct, but maybe it's changing and make the tip a little bit more uh, common with Japanese style swords. So in the sense that it didn't have this weird transition drop off, but that the uh, mune continued to run up the back of the blade. And Josiah did it in such a way that I, I really couldn't tell that this wasn't the original intention or design of the blade. It, it looks uh, spectacular. I, I wouldn't have, have known that's the case. So he, he tastefully removed stuff so much that it doesn't look like, like it was redone at all. It looks like you know, he removed as, as little as possible to to 
deliver the shape that I was looking for, which is a little bit more along the lines of a Japanese style wakasashi. So he did that, um, but he didn't shorten the Nakago. So the Nakago has the three holes in it. Uh, I may at some point have them filled with like lead or copper or something like that, uh, the ones that aren't used, which would also be a traditional thing to do. Uh, so I left the original tang the the length that it was uh, or as it came to me and if those holes don't line up with where they need to be i may have them filled in with something which would not be an uncommon thing to do uh, rather than cut it down or move it up i left those as they were and had josiah polish up the blade and the polish turned out absolutely amazing the the hamon is just tasteful and elegant it doesn't um usually bob's hamons as i've seen them before are a little bit more erratic and they have their own character to them, but this looks elegant and, and smooth and uh, and just, it, it's it's very, very pretty. I, I generally prefer the erratic stuff, but this is, uh, it's just tastefully done. It has this like crude kind of rugged exterior in the sense that it was made to be like a buoy. And then it has this kind of elegant flowy hamon to it. So I, I, I'm, I'm overall happy with how it is, how it looks. I don't know that I could be disappointed. Josiah, again, knocked it out of the park with the polish and the shaping. Uh, I couldn't be happier with his work here. He's, he's a man of many talents, as I've mentioned in a number of videos. He can polish, but he can correct the shape on this. Um, and I also had him make a habaki, and the habaki here has different stuff going on with it. And Josiah uh, does a great job with copper. He shows the Rokusho pattern that, or the patina that he puts on it, has this kind of deep orange color, and it accentuate some of the crystalline structure in in copper at least some of those those structures show a little bit so the material seems to have a little bit more depth than i typically see in copper and the shape is spectacular all in all he's he's fantastic at making habaki as well so um now i need to figure out what the hell i'm going to do with the thing so i've got this sword that came to me it was kind of in had some oddities with the shape those have been corrected without in my mind diminishing uh the, the style of the blade it, it overall it still looks <laughs> it still looks like what it was intended to be it didn't get shortened it's enhanced in my mind it blends in with the japanese style stuff though in theory it could still be a buoy if somebody wanted a, a slap scales on it um, i've got a nice habaki made for it and now i've got to got to get it sent off and figure out what to do with it and what that will be i, I frankly have no idea i do have an ignath katana so i may figure out some sort of daisho uh to to be made so this matches maybe one of the katana that i make uh or have have at the moment not sure which which direction it's going to be but frankly all that's in the air i have, I have no idea what i'm going to do with it um no idea whatsoever but given the hamon i'm thinking something along the lines of of an elegant looking maybe classic black on black with some blacky black I, I don't know though it is a special piece and so i'd like to uh, i'd like to do something special for it but I, I really don't know what that will be very often though um if i get a spot in the mystery man in black's queue which are few and far between these days but i I think the best course of action may just be to say, I have I have a die show. What do you want to do? What would be special? And, and usually that's where I get the, the coolest stuff uh, and the stuff I'm happiest with is if I left, <laughs> if I let somebody uh, who, who knows what's going on uh, take, take over a little bit. Uh, though in terms of direction, I really, I'm not sure. And I wish I did because it would make a more compelling, interesting video. And probably the Mystery Man in Black would be appreciative too if I gave some direction of what I actually wanted. But I have honestly really no idea. I do have plenty of different fittings that would look good, but the only thing that, um, the only piece that's really directing it at the moment is the Copper Habaki, which it, it could still go anywhere from there. Anyway, um, that's what I've got. Hopefully you found it interesting. Hopefully you like the, the quick look at this project. And when I have it uh, in the next phase, you will see another video updating the status of the project. That's all I've got though. Cheers and thanks for watching.